Hi everybody, Hanu the Honda Mackinen here. A little while ago I presented my 10 favorite adventure game puzzles and today I'd like to present 10 more of my favorite adventure game puzzles. Just like the first time, these are not in any particular order. So let's get on with it. Number one, dying. Twice. The Curse of Monkey Island. Last time I was careful not to include too many Monkey Island puzzles because I could basically make a whole list all about those, and I might just do that. Let's start with another one from my favorite installment of the Monkey Island series. On Blood Island, as foretold by the voodoo lady, Guybrush dies. Twice. Well, actually, he just fakes his own death, and the first time it's purely by accident. Essentially, mixing up Griswold Kutsu's hangover remedy with a drink from Griswold causes Guybrush to lose consciousness and be buried alive unceremoniously by Mord the Gravedigger. Now, this is already pretty fun, because your premature burial reunites you with Stan, whom you previously trapped in a coffin in Monkey Island 2. But as Guybrush needs to infiltrate the Gutsu family crypt, you have to convince that you're in fact related to Griswold, and then, after you pick up your death certificate, you use it to get a massive payout from your own life insurance policy from Stan. Yeah, this is one of my favorite puzzles, not just because of how it moves everything along in part 4 of the game, but also because Guybrush, without hesitation, fakes his death for a second time. Number 2, Zapping Khan, Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. Alright, I discussed Broken Sword last time, mainly on how most of the puzzles in these games just aren't very difficult. And this is a pretty straightforward one as well, but it still manages to bring a smile to my face. In the serious section, you come face to face with which is a tense situation where George can get killed easily. However, by sweet talking to Khan, you impress him enough that he wishes to shake your hand before he kills you, which is when you get to use the hand buzzer you received all the way at the start of the game to knock Khan out and escape. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as using the dagger as Nico in Broken Sword 2, but I just love how it's a novelty item that saves George's life at this part in the game. Number 3, the first half of the Seal of Solomon, and yet another one from Gabriel Knight 3. Now the whole underground temple section of the game is pretty cool, but the chessboard, pendulum, and pendulum again puzzles don't really hold a candle to the awesome first half of the Seal of Solomon puzzle. This one is pretty simple on the surface, but you can probably guess that it's very very tempting and I guess in a sadistic way fun to see Gabriel get killed in several ways. Also, I just like this puzzle because the solution is pretty clear with you basically picking the least inviting option for each of the parts of the puzzle. And it makes a hell of a lot more sense than the second half where the solution is, frankly, arbitrary as hell. Damn, that sucks. Number 4, The Spitting Competition, Monkey Island 2. Alright, here's one from my least favorite Monkey Island game, but I have to admit that figuring out the spitting competition puzzle for the first time was a very rewarding experience. Basically, winning the spitting competition helps you get money from the antique store, but the solution comes in three parts. Now, it's not enough just to mix up the green drink for at the Scab Island bar. You also have to use a horn and a half-blind cannon happy pirate to distract everyone in order to make winning easier by moving the flags around. And then finally, you have to keep an eye on this sash to see when the wind is at its strongest in order to win the contest. Or in the words of Tim Schafer, you cheat, cheat, and then cheat some more. Number 5, Making a Fake Beard, Simon the Sorcerer. This one comes from the first Simon the Sorcerer, which I only beat last year. Make no mistake, Simon 1 absolutely beats the stuffing from its sequels in the abstract logic department. It's an annoyingly tedious adventure game at times, with loads of items hidden in the background. Also, frankly, I don't think it's as much fun as Simon 2, but that might just be nostalgia on my part. Anyway, at one point you have to sneak into the Dwarves' Mine, which is definitely one of the most memorable locations. However, in order to get past the guards, you need to disguise yourself as a dwarf. And how do you do that? Well, if your guess was to go and shave the beard of a passed out dwarf in the tavern and use it as a disguise, you're a much more clever gamer than I am. And also, what the hell, dude? Yeah, I kinda hate this puzzle because I frankly would have never thought of this solution myself, but any excuse for an adventure game character to wear a disguise is fun for me. So you can probably guess why I like this one. Number 6, The Vacuum Cleaner Claws, Day of the Tentacle. Day of the Tentacle is probably another LucasArts game I should get around to making a video out of. Basically, this whole game is full of creative puzzles involving time travel, as things you do in the past as one character affects the characters in the other time periods. 
There's lots of great examples, but my favorite is making the American Founding Fathers pen that every home should have a vacuum cleaner in the Declaration of Independence, using a brochure with George Washington's name on it. And you do all this just to make a vacuum cleaner appear in Laverne's timeline. Apart from being simple, I love this puzzle just for the idea that the Founding Fathers would write this whole thing in, despite not even knowing what a vacuum cleaner is. Number 7, The Diving Competition, Escape from Monkey Island. I was really torn on which puzzle to include from the fourth Monkey Island game, easily the least loved entry of the series, which is unfair as Escape happens to have loads of fun puzzles. I was really tempted to include using a duck to capture Pegno's Pete, but I guess if I'm really honest, my favorite puzzle is the diving competition. Okay, so Jambalaya Island, worst location in any Monkey Island game, let's all agree. But besting Marco De Polo in the diving competition is easily one of my favorite puzzles, just because of all the effort it requires, from learning how to do the correct diving moves, to learning how to not make such big splashes, to finally straight up blackmailing the judge who was already bribed to give you low scores. And then you get to ruin Marco's second dive. So yeah, basically the same thing as the spitting contest, but Guybrush gets a new outfit, and I love the judges and Marco De Polo himself. Plus, the payoff on this one is way funnier. Number 8, Figuring Out the Imposter, Strong Bad's Cool Cave for Attractive People. In the fourth episode of Strong Bad's Game, you travel to many different looking countries to talk to Strong Sad, who keeps talking with different accents. These multiple characters are supposed to be brothers with different skill sets, while you try to figure out the location of Verducci, the villain played by the King of Town. Okay, this part is pretty confusing if you don't know Danger Risk or Strong Bad or Homestar Runner, so if this entry feels very confusing, Go ahead and take a quick trip to the Homestar Wiki before resuming. But don't worry, I'll wait. Essentially, you discover that there are actually two Mini Brothers, and you have to suss out which one is the fake brother to get on Perducci's trail. And you do this by showing a painting to each of them, looking for an incongruity in their stories related to it. It's a very simple puzzle, but one that requires you to remember some vital details, which is why I enjoy it a lot. And it also feels the least linear of the puzzles in episode 4, which was pretty linear on the count of being a home movie. Number 9, Getting Out of a Snake, The Curse of Monkey Island. And for our last Monkey Island puzzle, let's go for one of my favorite locked room puzzles in any adventure game. Traversing Plunder Island and trying to find Danger Cove, Guybrush unfortunately gets eaten by a giant snake. Luckily, you discover a bunch of items in the snake's stomach, including some syrup. Now, earlier, you picked up an Ipecac flower, which you, of course, used with the syrup to make Syrup of Ipecac. Which, for those of you not in the know, is an emetic, which is to say a medicine which forces you to throw up. Now, what's funny about this is that the flower of Ipecac is totally a real thing. Yes, you don't actually put it in syrup. But the wordplay here isn't so much the point, as is the fact that you get all this weird stuff in Guybrush's inventory. All of which Guybrush has something really funny to say about. And then you lose almost all of it immediately when you go into the quicksand pit. But hey, definitely one of the most memorable puzzles from the game. Number 10, The Minefield, Full Throttle. Oh yeah, finally a manly game. Full Throttle is the manliest, and what's more manlier than a biker trying to traverse a minefield to an enemy biker's gang lair? Bunnies. I mean, toy bunnies. Okay, so the minefield puzzle might be a little bit on the tedious side, but it's also really hilarious. Step 1, steal a toy bunny. Step 2, blow up the bunny to get the battery for a radio-controlled car. Step 3, Force the gift shop owner to go after said radio-controlled car and steal some more bunnies. Step 4. Dump the bunnies and then immediately pick all of them up before they blow up, and then sacrifice them one by one to make a safe path through the minefield. Step 5. Profit. I mean, get captured. This is just a lovely, silly puzzle, which is why I love it. And that's all from me for now. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mekin, and see you on the next one. Yeah.